This lesson is for section 5.2. We're going to be talking about the specific exponential function y equals e to the x. It's also referred to as the natural exponential function. Here is a very brief history um, on the number e. It's very similar to something like pi or square root 2 in the sense that it's irrational and it's going to continue on forever without any pattern. Um, but what we want to know for the purposes of this course is that e is approximately 2.7. Okay, So let's begin by graphing y equals e to the x, so the natural exponentiation function here. Well, we have a base of something that's approximately 2.7. So this is the same as something like 2.7 to the x power. So it behaves very similarly to any, to any exponential function in the sense that when you plug in 0 here, we have a y-intercept at 1, 0. When I plug in 1, I end up with e to the first power, which is just e. And that's, if I graph it, approximately 2.7. So when I graph this at 1, comma e, it's probably going to be about right here, a little higher than 2, less than 3, and I can graph that as 1, comma e, so it's because it's approximately 2.7. Um, and when I plug in negative 1, I get 1 over e, and that's approximately 0.37. Okay, this is something else you're going to want to memorize as well, so it's about 0.37. So let's say it's about right here. Um, it's going to have a horizontal asymptote, just like any exponential function does at y equals 0. Okay? And your three corner or your three key points here are your y asymptote 1 0. Your y intercept, I'm sorry, one um, at jeez, I even wrote it backwards here. Sorry. At 0 1, um, the point 1 e and negative 1 1 over e. Okay? So these are the three points that we want to look at, look at when we try to translate them. So when we graph y equals e to the x minus 1, we know from yesterday that this is just going to move this right one unit. So we move everything to the right one unit, so now we have um, a point at 1, 1. We have a point at 2, e. So about, let's see here, it's about, well it's a little bit low for 2.7. Let's put about right there. Um, and we have the point 0, 1 over e. Okay, we're just shifting everything to the right one. So we graph that. We still have our horizontal asymptote here at y equals 0. All right, now in number 3, we have two translations here, transformations that are occurring. We have a reflection, a flip over the x-axis here, and we are also moving 1 to the right. So <clears throat> the first thing you want to do is make sure you flip it over the x-axis. So instead of looking like this, now it's going to look like that which means that our coordinates, were, which were at 0, 1, it's now at 0, negative 1. Our point that was at 1, e, is now at negative, um, or 1, negative e, I should say. So about here. And our point that was at negative 1, e, 1 over e, is now at negative 1, negative 1 over e. So about here. Now, this is prior to shifting it to the right one, so now I'm going to move everything to the right one as well. So I end up at 2, negative e, 1, negative 1, and 0, negative 1 over e. And these are the points that I would want to see when I look on your quiz, these three distinct points. And we'll show the y... Uh, the horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay, sorry, my dogs are going crazy. I think they're calmed down now. But um, for number 4, we've got three different uh, transformations. We have a flip over the x-axis. We're shifting right 1, and we're also moving up 1. Okay, so I'm going to list out the points first, and then I want to use transformations for each one of those coordinates before I go out and graph it. Um, just because I think it'll be a little bit neater than the last question where I was sort of drawing it all over the place. Um, and this might be a, the perfect, you know, algorithm for what you do also when you graph your points. Um, some of you might like to draw it over, you know, each branch and then shift it accordingly. But I like to just start with the, the beginning coordinates and move from there. So I know that I have negative 1, 1 over e. 
I have the point 0, 1 and the point 1, e, that's on the graph of y equals e to the x. So on that mother function, these would be my three points. Now, if I'm going to flip it over the x-axis, that means that I'm going to make each of these the opposite for the y value. And if I shift everything to the right one, this is a, an effect on the x-coordinate, so I'm going to add 1 to every x-coordinate here. And moving it up 1 is an effect on the y, because it's a vertical direction. So I'm going to add 1 to every coordinate here. So now I have the new point, 0, 1 plus negative 1 over e, the point 1, 0, and 2, 1 plus negative e, or negative e plus 1. Okay. So when I graph this, um, obviously the easiest point here is 1, 0, and it happens to be an x-intercept. So it's crossing, um, you know, our old asymptote was at y equals 0. Now it's not going to be at y equals 0. It's going to shift, just like everything else is going to shift. It's going to shift up 1. So now when I graph, let's try this one, 1 minus 1 over e. Well, we can approximate this because 1 over e is about 0.37. So we're graphing something that's about 0.63. So at 0 0.63, we'll put it about right here. That would be fine. And we're going to label that as 0, 1, minus 1 over e. So we want to give the exact coordinate there. This is the point 1, 0. That one's pretty easy. Let's do the next one, 2, comma, 1 minus e. Well, 1 minus e is about 1 minus 2.7. So that puts me at negative 1.7. So at 2, negative 1.7, I'm about right here. And this function is going to look kind of like this. So it's got an asymptote now at y equals 1. That asymptote also shifted up 1. So I want to be explicit about that. I forgot to put the coordinates of that point. And there's that other point here. Um, now, in all of these problems that we've done, the uh, three key points actually end up being our important points. Like if you notice, this is also the, the y-intercept. Here's an x-intercept. Back here, we had already shown and we had found the y-intercept as well. Um, again, we have the y-intercept here and here. These are all <clears throat> those important points that we typically would want to see. So if your graph ends up, let's say it's shifted over this way like that, and you've got your three points like here. Okay, that's not exactly where they would be, but let's say they, they were about here. Well, I want you, there's a horizontal asymptote here at y equals negative 2. I want you to actually find where it crosses the uh, y-axis and where it crosses the x-axis. So you're going to explicitly find that. And to find the um, where it crosses the y-intercept or the y-axis, it's pretty easy. You're just going to plug into the function, you know, x is 0. So a lot of times, um, you know, for x plus 3 or something like that, it's going to become e to some power, okay? And that would be your exact coordinate if I plugged in x equals 0. So you'll see some problems like that in your homework. I just wanted to warn you about that now, that you need to make sure that you're showing the x and the y-intercept. Most of the time, it's not going to have an x-intercept. It could, because it could get shifted down so far that you would end up with an x-intercept. But that's the basic idea for the lesson, so you're going to get some practice at it. Make sure you ask any questions if you have any trouble with any of this. I will see you in class mañana.